You know, when I heard there was going to be a Thing video game, I initially had two thoughts. One was that I was fucking there. I had to own this game because John Carpenter's The Thing is one of my favorite movies of all time. The other was, please, God, do not let them screw this up. Well, they did. Now, ah, calm down, Wilfred Brimley. Go check your blood sugar or something. See, when you're talking about The Thing, you can either talk about what it is, or more importantly, what it isn't. What it is, is another dime a dozen over-the-shoulder shooter. What it isn't, is it is most definitely not The Thing. This game gargles balls. You know, I should have been more careful when I bought this game. I forgot the cardinal rule of movie tie-in games is that they almost always, always suck. Especially when they're made 20 years after the fact. I had such high expectations for this game, and all it turned out to be was one of the most uninspired, derivative, ugly, badly acted, knockoff pieces of shit I have ever played for any console in history. This game pissed me off to no end. Oh, this cold is killing me. Yeah, this game is killing me. Now, you'll hear all the time the crew members bitching behind your back about how fucking cold it is. And, they, you know, you, you've been sent in to rescue the original crew, but in the original movie, they blew up the entire base. So you have to get inside or you'll freeze to death. Well, you know, like, it's so much warmer than 40 below behind the shattered walls of the bombed out bunker that's been frozen out for months. You know, breathe in this rich environment because this is about as interesting as it ever gets. From here on out, all you do is run around the same flat gray metal corridors in every level for the entire run of the game. You know, what I really like how the trained Arctic Marine doesn't go into Antarctica with a hat on. He just runs in there with like, you know, his face completely uncovered. So, the first thing that happens is you're looking, running around looking for survivors. Of course you don't find any. And eventually you find Wilford Brimley's UFO. I mean, I always liked how cheap the UFO looked, both in the movie and in this game. I mean, it's downright Plan 9. Can you imagine Wilford Brimley landing in this thing in a major metropolitan city and fucking invading? I mean, he built this out of helicopter parts and pieces from a shed. What did it run on? Gasoline? What really strikes me is how bad the animation and graphics are in this game, even for the time. I mean, this looks like the, your guys are plastic action man figures. Where was Wilford gonna sit? There's no place for him to even crouch. In this part, you find what happened to the two heroes at the end of the movie. Yeah, big time spoilers. But you find the body of Childs, the black guy, Keith Davis. But oddly, McCready, Kurt Russell's character, is nowhere to be seen. Dad, I wonder if this will come back to haunt me later in the game. Anyway, the real selling point of this game at the time was the trust system. Because this is one of the first games I can remember where you actually had a squad of units that you could order around. Only the problem was... Being one of the first, it was also one of the worst. You need anything repaired. And there are three kinds of guys. The engineers, who you need to keep alive. Medics, the guys you really want to keep alive. And back in there, there's soldiers. I'm locked, loaded, and ready to make shit dig. Who talks like that? Anyway, it doesn't really matter that there are soldiers, because not one of them can shoot for shit. I mean, I'll talk about more, more about this later, but there's really not as much depth as they led you to believe. I mean, really, there's two orders you can issue a guy. Stay here or follow me. And, hey, what are those guys doing? But the really important aspect of the squads is that they trust you, which does not work nearly as well as they claim. But one of the important things is they, they teach you to get these blood testing kits to make sure you're not infected. And who keeps blood testing kits in the fucking dog kennel? I mean, really? But really the most, the most obvious way to get them to trust you is just to give them a gun. I mean, that's it. I mean, the guy goes, I don't trust you. Take this 9mm. Hey, buddy! Now I'm going to show you what I already know. So you show this guy that you're human by administering the test to yourself. And, wow, look at the size of that thing. He just sucked out like a liter of blood. Wow. And this is nothing like the movie, which used a piece of hot wire, which says to me these Marines actually brought these devices with them. For what reason, I don't know. One guy fails the test, and you immediately take a flamethrower to the fucker. A flamethrower? Mac wants the flamethrower. Mac wants the what? But that was exactly my reaction in the movie. Mac wants a flamethrower? What the fuck are people at a research outpost doing with fucking flamethrowers? And what are our Arctic Marines doing with flamethrowers? Who are they expecting to fight here? The Germans? 
And that's really the point of the movie, is like, the smallest bit of a thing can infect you, so the only way to truly kill them is to incinerate them completely with a flamethrower. Interesting, though, that it doesn't set the wooden building on fire. But don't bother wasting your blood testing kits on other crew members. There's really no point, and I'll tell you why in a second. But I just really never connected with the squad combat thing, because for one, your soldiers are idiots. Two, they can't control any aspect of their lives. They have to be led around like fucking sheep. I mean, Collins? Collins? Hey, Collins, you okay? What the hell is he doing? Is he river dancing? I think he might be infected with the thing. Uh, Collins, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you this little test here. Just try and hold still, okay, buddy? Huh. I, I guess you're okay. You're just kind of freaking out on me here. Come on, Collins. Collins? Now what? Oh, bullshit! I tested him! Just seconds ago, he was fine! You know, either these tests really don't work, or this game is bugged up the ass. Come to think of it, none of the soldiers are behaving that rationally, and I think they're all a little sick. I think somebody passed some bad guacamole down at the barracks. Whoa, he totally cubed it! Oh! Oh! Oh, guys! Oh! Oh, the thing's puking on me! Another uh, thing! He peed himself! What the? Do you have no control over your bowels? You know, if you're really good, you can actually get him to go in stereo. Awesome! Noticing a theme here? Here's another one. You'll notice that most of the time, all you do in this game is fixing fuse boxes, or junction boxes as they call them. You do this to get into certain doors, activate computers, and turn on lights. Okay? And once you do that... But bullshit! Why did that computer explode? <sighs> Alright, I'll try to explain. Uh, basically, there are two kinds of junction boxes. There are basic and advanced, and they're fucking everywhere. I mean, why is every door in the place open only by these omnipresent junction boxes? Do you remember everyone having to flip a switch to open the automatic electric doors in the original movie? And why in the hell did they all simultaneously explode? Why are they so easily fixed by a guy in 40 below degree temperatures by a guy with no tools wearing gloves? I mean, okay, and, and only an engineer can fix the advanced ones. That's an engineer. I, mean, I get that. You need to keep certain people alive to open doors. But why bother with the basic junction boxes then? I mean, if you can fix them yourself, why even make the junction boxes distinct enough to screw with? They're not a puzzle. They don't require any thought. Why are they here? The advanced have a purpose. Because you need an engineer, it turns the whole thing into a fucking escort mission. You know, and that's the reason I gamed it. It's a babysit fucking loser. And not only that, but for some reason, you have to hold down the use button to fill a meter until you fix the box. I mean, why? What is the point of this meter? It's not like you're any, uh, under any kind of time crisis to open the doors. The game makes this big deal out of repairing these things when they never present an obstacle. They're just a waste of time. You getting tired of these junction boxes yet? Well, fuck you, because this isn't even a quarter of them. I'm not even getting started yet. I had to sit here and fix every one of these fucking things, escorting assholes through the entire base, watching them throw up all over their own shoes and piss themselves. I'm amazed nobody shit themselves. I mean, this game is all bodily fluids and junction boxes. They ought to call this game puke and fuse. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. What the fuck? What the what is that? What just burst into flames back there? Why is Antarctica spontaneously combusting? What the fuck is going on? God, this game treats me like an idiot. Check this out. I go to the top of a warehouse, and there's a crate of shotgun shells up there. I mean, who the fuck stockpiles shotgun shells at the top of a warehouse? And look at this. Some of these puzzles are so blatantly obvious. Gee, I wonder how I get past these my little barrels. Day. You know what really plucks my short hairs about this game? The fact that it's just a blatant, shameless Half-Life knockoff. This is what you're fighting almost 90% of the time in this game. These little teeny head crab things. And they are head crab. First of all, this happened once in the entire game when the, the head detached from somebody's body and became this this predatory type thing. And it got burned into it, but this is like your main enemy. For, like, for some reason, the thing 
that can choose to be any creature it wants to be just turned into headcrabs because it seemed like the scariest piece of shit to do. So now I'm getting to the boss. The sound cuts out because that's one of the most common glitches in this game. What bullshit! How did I just die? What the fuck? No, I didn't even get a chance! But I guess that's where the similarities with Half-Life end, huh? Hey, look! There are special forces from America. No Sorry, doubt they are here to help me. Get that access door open. Shoot the kill. What? But but you're Americans, and I'm a good guy too. What the hell? Stand down, soldier. You don't mean to tell me to that the U.S. Here. government you is trying to, to use the thing as a time. weapon? No! I'm gonna have to ask for your weapon. Check this out. You get captured by the cigarette smoking man from the X Files. I'm serious. That's him. Awesome. So you wake up in this super secret ultra science lab constructed either by the US government or Norway. I don't know which, but either way, bullshit! The cigarette smoking man is looking at his little cloned experiments which he's gonna try to import to the mainland. Like he couldn't do that any one of a number of days for the three years this facility was being constructed. And you wake up and, you know, coincidentally they left you with all your weapons, your backpack, and your coat. Despite the fact that we're experimenting on you and probing your anus. And all hell has broken loose since you were unconscious. So you're left to fend for yourself. Good thing this base has four foot air ducts. But the cigarette smoking man has left surprises for you. Like this little number. You find a crate in the middle of a warehouse after repairing the fuse box, no less. And you peek inside and you see that it has a bomb. And your character takes about eight minutes to discover and fully piece together what it means. I mean, look at the numbers on this thing. Who the fuck designed this bomb? The Joker? Christ. Did that look a military issue over here? The digital readout? But my favorite trick is one where the cigarette smoking man actually throws Jesus, this guy in. This guy asks you for help, look, and only can you can only stop you whatever's you going on together. in the next room over there, so now he tells tell me you to what go to you a know. computer. Check out that terminal. I, I can't figure it out, but maybe it'll make sense to you. Okay. Then no problem. I'm helping everybody out. I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm the hero of this show. I'll just go in in front of you and make sure it's safe. And, and hey, what the hell? Poison gas? What the fuck is this? A Bond movie? Who rigged the room like this? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What do I do? Uh, oh, thank Jesus! A fuse box. Oh my god! I thought I was a goner there for a second. If not for that fuse box, I'd have been done for. <laughs> Interesting that he took such elaborate measures to kill me before. I mean, I was laying right there comatose. Why did he just shoot me in the head? Or anything else, man. Infect me with the thing. Or, hey, there's a propane tank next to the door controls. Interesting design. Anyway, let's try to recap the, uh, the path to the next interesting bit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Motherfuck! Come on! God damn it! Anyway, check out this AI on the Special Forces. One, two, three... What the fuck are you guys doing? Four... I just killed four men! Oh, no, you bastards! God! Oh my god, two fuse boxes in the same hall! What do I do? <laughs> anyway, this is one of the bosses. It's this gigantic, uh, dangling penis monster. And to this day, I'm still not really sure whether the bosses are really hard or really easy. I think it's really just a matter of finding a good place to hide. And the real bummer is with this boss, there isn't one. So, uh, god damn it! But there's usually not that much of a trick as you think there is. There's usually a very simple answer. Oh. And the hit detection is a little suspect, as I meant. But I finally did manage to figure out this boss's one fatal weakness. Uh, circle strafing. That's basically it. Just circle strafe and shotgun it to shit. Yeah! yeah see, you ever seen McCready do this in the Thing movie? I love it, you know, circling around and dancing, floating with a shotgun. So, I think it's red, so I probably gotta burn it, so I'm gonna switch to a flame grenade now. Eat this! Oh! <laughs> bitch. Shit, cheating bitch. Hey, you want to hear? You want to see another game? This game rips off. Does this look familiar to you at all? Running away out of a building that's exploding all around you. Okay, time's up. Max Payne. 
The total ripoff. Now I'm skipping to the very last confrontation of the game. Game over, Whitley. <laughs> game over, Whitley. Now come on, Blake. The dude smokes eight packs a day. You think a little fire's gonna hurt him? I don't think so. And he pukes at you. I was missing that. And not only that, he blows the biggest chunks of all time. Ooh, oh, he totally split. I can see you're busy right now. Um, come back some other time. You gotta be fucking kidding. But you are not alone. Somebody in a very you dorky know. hat you may yeah, remember from the shit. first movie helped. You need you to circle close. That's right. Fire, it's McCready, which is total bullshit. You gotta be fucking kidding. I'm not even... The guy survived exposure. I gotta kill this thing. Oh, and hey, look. There happen to be conveniently placed barrels of flammable kerosene circled all around this monster thing. Well, that's convenient. I wonder what I'm supposed to do. Oh, and when you shoot them, they all shoot fire inwardly towards the thing instead of exploding. Well, that's... Also unusual, but hey, I won't lick a gift explosion in the mouth. This fight's really easy. I wonder why the thing decided to turn into a giant monster in between a circle of four kerosene barrels. Doesn't really seem like the most obvious thing to do. Or why did they even bother stacking those explosive barrels in the first place around the alien spacecraft? Seems like an inconvenient place to store kerosene, but I'm not a scientist. And so, under your combined assault of kerosene and machine gun fire, the ultra-cigarette-smoking man-thing is killed. And just in case you hadn't figured it out from his dorky Frito Bandito hat, there, you ask your mysterious savior his name. name. <laughs> no, you mean to tell me this guy survived no, for, from what, from days, from weeks, vacation. in the Arctic exposure, uh, and survived, so somehow found a helicopter, and then decided to help you out? McCready. Uh, R.J. McCready. Yeah, yeah. U.S. Outpost North 31. You are so not Kurt Russell. You know what? You know what? Fuck you! Yeah, fuck you too! Game over, Whitley. Where's the Tylenol?